Hi, my name is Bill, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the flame detector in your dryer. The reason why you might have to do this is because your dryer isn't heating at all. For this repair, we'll be using a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver, and our friend the Shorts Phillips head screwdriver. Warning, before doing any repairs, please disconnect your power source. So this is the appliance that we'll be using in this demonstration. It's a GE. Keep in mind, yours at home might look a little bit different than what we've got here, but the same techniques should still apply. Just make sure you turn your gas off. So we're going to start by turning our dryer around. So what we'll need to do is remove these screws up here in order to get the control panel off. So now that we've got the back unscrewed, we can just slide the control panel over and we're going to lift it up and we're going to put it back in this space right here. Now we're going to open up our dryer door and on either side there are two screws going straight up. So we need to remove those screws now and we're going to be using a Phillips head screwdriver to take these screws out. Now that we've got those screws out, we can take the top off. All we have to do is just lift up and pull back slightly on the top. And we'll set that off to the side. So now that I've got these screws out, I want to close up our front dryer door. Now I've got two more screws that screw into the front panel. And I'm just going to have to remove those as well. And when you remove them, just make sure that when you get close to having them come out, you catch them because you don't want them to fall down into the dryer there. There we go. Now that we've got those screws out, we can tilt the front panel forward. And once we've got it tilted forward and separated from the drum, we can lift it up over the tabs on the bottom and just turn it like so because we've got some wires attached to it as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach some of these wires here. First one I'm going to detach is this black one that's connected right over here. And to do that, I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and I'm going to pry up. There we go. Now I've got this plastic guard that's in my way a little bit. What I'm going to do is just pull it slightly out like that so it's removed from the frame. And now I can move it out of my way. Again, just don't move it too far. You don't want to break it. We'll move it just enough so that I can use my screwdriver and pry these wires off. There we go. There's one. And we just need to unplug our white wire. And we'll just pull that straight out there. So now I'm just going to remove this last wire here. And once again, just pulling that straight out. So right on top of the drum here, we've got this piece, which is our belt there. So in order to get it off, I'm going to reach inside of our dryer here. And I've got to get my arm in that little hole. We're going to have to push up on the lever to release the tension reach in with our other hand and now we can just take that right off so now that we've removed the belt from the pulley we can lift up on the belt that'll help us pick up the drum so right here is our flame detector in order to get it off we're going to have to remove these wires and then the screw these wires should pull straight off And if you need to, you can also use a flathead screwdriver to help you pry it off. And now we're going to use our short screwdriver with the Phillips head attachment on it in order to loosen up this screw here. And now that we've got that screw out, we just need to angle it slightly 
and there's a tab and a slot at the bottom there that we just need to remove just like that now you can grab your new OEM replacement flame detector if you don't have one already you can find it on our online store so on the bottom of our flame detector we have that tab right there sticking out and that'll go into a slot right at the bottom of our burner tube here and we'll slide that in and then line up where our screw goes in and I'll get that started by hand and then I'll finish tightening it with our short screwdriver again and now we can plug our wires back in here So you'll see on the back of your drum here, there's a small shaft. And when you put the drum back in, you're going to want to make sure that shaft goes into that hole right there. There we go. So it's a little bit hard to line it up when you can't really see it back there. But you can do the best you can. And it might take a couple of tries to get it exactly in place. There we go. And after a couple of tries, you should be able to get it in there. And you'll see that the rim of the drum is, is inside the frame of the dryer there. Now to put the drum back on, we're going to take the belt. We're going to go on the other side of the wheel here, just like this. And we're going to lift it up, keeping this all together and then loop the belt around the shaft here and make sure everything's on straight there we go and then everything should be able to spin freely now just like that we're going to reattach that to the middle this is the white wire that goes up along the edge of the door and goes to the light so that's plugged in now and now with this last one we attach it right there there we go now i'm going to put this plastic piece back into place so right into that slot right there and we'll plug our last wire in and you're just going to make sure that these slight bumps there line up with the holes on the side and that fits in nicely and now we'll put the front panel back on so now we're going to line up our front panel with the tabs on the bottom and we're going to set those into those tabs and stand the door up as we do that we're also going to line up with the drum and the inside of that plastic piece on the washer is going in the drum and we've also got these metal tabs on the side that are going into the slots on the frame. So once those are all lined up and the panel's flush, we can screw it back on. So now we're going to get our screw started in this hole here. And then after we get it started, we'll screw it down nice and tight. Same thing on this side. Start our screw in by hand and use our Phillips head screwdriver to finish the job. There we go. Now I'm going to put the top back on and you'll see there are two tabs sticking out from the top. There are going to be two slots that correspond with them. So I want to line all those up. So after I line those up, Make sure that the tabs go into the slots just like that and there's a couple on the front as well so now we can screw that back in so we'll put in our screw and with that little tiny hole at the top you should be able to line up the screw with the hole that it belongs to there once you got that started a little bit finish screwing it in
Now we're going to put our lint filter back into place since that came out a little while ago. There you go. Now we can close our dryer door. Now we can line our control panel back up and slide that back over and set that back into place. Now we can screw it back in. Now we can turn our dryer back around and then once we do that, we'll plug everything back in and your repair is complete. Now we can turn our gas back on. Finally, don't forget to plug in your appliance. If you need to replace any parts for your appliances, you can find an OEM replacement part on our website, pcapplianceRepair.com. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, comment and share our video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us make more videos just like these for you to watch for free.